Uh, good evening, everybody. Good evening, members of the Rent Guidelines Board. Thank and thank you, everybody, for your service. Uh, I'm Jerry Houlihan. I'm chairman of the AOAC, the Apartment Owners Advisory Council of Westchester County, and I'm a longtime employee of uh, Houlihan Parns, which is a family-owned real estate uh, business uh, specializing in the sales, leasing, financing, and management of multifamily properties. Uh, this year is the first year that we're coming out of the newly passed HSPPA law of 2019. And as you've heard from owners, it has been beyond difficult with the extra burden of COVID-19. There have been increased expenses in cleaning and disinfecting and dealing with more maintenance requests as tenants have been forced to stay in their homes for the past 90 to 120 days. We have also uh, dealt with the income losses for our tenants. So as many have stated, we've been implementing rent payment plans, waiving late fees, and offering rent forbearance to help them cope with the effects of the pandemic. All of this we do voluntarily because we know the value that our tenants are to our businesses. They are our clients, so we serve them. The passage of HSTPA has been devastating to the operation of our buildings, especially as it relates to the major capital improvements in individual apartment renovations. One of our member owners testified the other night that the new law discourages renovations of apartments. I would say that it really eliminates it almost altogether. As another owner said, he plans on warehousing apartments if those apartments that become vacant have had rents significantly below the cost of operating them. The cost to operate an apartment, according to your DHCR tables this year, is $1,160 per month. With the new law, it really makes no sense to renovate an apartment and re-rent it. Here's why. In addition to the loss of the previous 20% vacancy increase, the individual apartment improvement rent increases are now limited to a monthly rent increase equal to 1 one sixty-eighth of the cost in a 35 unit or less building and 1 one eightieth of the cost in larger unit buildings. The amount allowed for the purposes of IAI increases is limited to $15,000 in any 15 year period and ends after 30 years. So if an owner spends $15,000 in a 40 unit building, they are entitled to an $83.33 increase in monthly rent. That means an apartment that vacated with a previous rent of $750 can only be rented for $833. So the net result is instead of losing $410 per month, he is now losing $325 per month. So you can understand why an owner would choose the warehouse apartments with the hope that the state will come to its senses and revise the law eventually. It's also apparent that last year our legislators failed to address the housing affordability issue properly. The solution to affordable housing is not to restrict rents, but to partner with the real estate community in the smart building of housing through tax incentives, grants, and the removal of laws that prevent development. The more restrictions that are placed on rents, the more our ETPA regulated housing stock suffers. Most of our buildings are almost, if not 100 years old, and the vital systems that run these buildings, the plumbing, roofing, electrical, elevators, heating, and windows, have limited useful lives and need to be replaced over time. This new law prevents that from happening now. Last year at our hearings, an owner testified that he had a capital expenditure budget to replace all the elevator systems in five of his properties. After the law passed in May, everything was canceled. With all of this said, we know that your duty as a board member is limited to lease renewal increases and that you have no control of the state housing laws. But in your deliberation, deliberations, you must consider all of these negative effects that HSTPA has caused to the owners and their properties. To further burden them with minimal increases would ultimately make the ones that they serve the tenants suffer even more. If you look again at your HDR tables this year, there really isn't that much of a difference of the increases between the rental income and the operating expenses. They have increased 2.7% and 2.9% respectively for the last year. If we did not get the increases, the 1.75% for one year and the 2.75% for two years last year, there would have been a much larger divide. Both owners and tenants deserve fair, reasonable increases this year. Please help our buildings and our apartments remain safe and livable. We thank you for your service to this board 
and for allowing me to speak tonight.